The newest live stream for Konosuba Fantastic's GP version just happened, and not only did they finally reveal the new playable unit in the GP version, they also teased two new events that are coming, and oh boy, there's a lot of POG stuff happening. I'm Gatsuma Gaming, let's get right to this. Before we start with the actual live stream, just a quick info and reminder for people. The third anniversary of Konosuba is coming April 10th, only a few more days it will be Konosuba Wednesday in the future that's pretty pog for that under anime Japan it was actually a event with the voice actors as you can clearly see on screen I just want to show some stuff there around for example we had a really cool booth with like a giant toad where you could actually go in there to make pictures we had a wall with like you know writing some different voice actors so here for example with Kazuma with a toad drawing we have Sora Mia aka Aqua's voice actor with a beautiful Aqua and toad drawing we have of course Free Takahashi Megumin's uh, voice actor and we have Darkest voice actor um I with also beautiful drawing besides that we got some teaser for some new merch aka these these small palverse figurines of Kazuma Aqua Darkness Union and Iris really cool by the way, yeah, you can go to a cosplay in there and make pictures. I think it was pretty funny. And we are getting two collabs in regarding of merch, not in game, just general kind of super stuff. So first up, we will have this store popping up with, um, you know, some goodies and mostly like latte, I think, with latte art that you can buy. But of course, real life merch as well. So that's pretty cool, right? Besides that, one thing that I'm really curious about is that they actually make a collaboration with uh where is but yeah Rita Takashi also went in there to make pictures they, they loved it they loved it it's pretty cool but there it is they actually have a collaboration with the Tsumagoi village and make a cabbage collaboration i have no clue what exactly will happen there if they drop cabbage plushies or if they just sell cabbage food or something like that but the fact that they make a collaboration with a real life town it's really cool, not gonna lie, I think it's really, really cool. Okay, with that out of the way, let's finally, finally go to the real live stream. Uh, this time we just had Jun Fukushima there on our MC-kun and one Def kun So, um, no Ito-san, no auto vice sectors, but it's still fine. And we're starting off with, just again, recap information. Season 3 starts on April 10th on Tokyo MX and a little bit earlier, half an hour earlier, if I remember correctly, on Ambia. So, you know, Japanese people can watch it earlier. Of course, there was also the real life event where people could watch it. So that's also there. But generally speaking, Japanese people get to watch it earlier. And we probably get it on Wednesday, I would assume. But that's really cool. They will also rescreen the movie in Japan. So, you know, not interesting for us. But what's interesting for us is that we in game get a collaboration with season three. And Kind of the same as Buckwin, which should also come to the global side, by the way. So expect some free goodies for the spin-off soon in global, which is fitting because we get the anime season 3 soon. Um, that includes 3,000 quarts on day 1. Um, and we get some 4-star tickets. And not just general 4-star tickets. These 4-star tickets can be used to get limited units. That's right. You have a chance. I'm not sure if it's guaranteed or not, but at least you have a chance to get limited units out of this 4-star ticket and... Through the whole period, we are getting four of those tickets. So that's pretty cool for people who miss all the limited units because, you know, maybe you get something new. There's a chance, right? There's always a chance. <laughs> then we're, of course, getting a guaranteed four star banner as well. So single pool, single pool will be a four star. And the four star can be a limited unit. Again, great for newer people, great for people who miss some other units to potentially stack those. We can, for example, see Bikini Darkness, a rather new unit in there. So we're not sure how far we'll go, but there's a good chance that a lot of units are included in there that you can snack. And then, the first title for me is the Steel minigame is back. So if you forgot what it is or didn't play back then, this is a minigame where you are in a dark room and you see a silhouette on different places and you want to use a steel on them to see who it is. And depending on what you steal, you get quartz. 
minimum reward is like I think either 100 or 250 quartz. For example, if you steal a weight from darkness or something like that. Was it just a vanilla or something like that? And then the jackpot was of course Chris's and Megumin's Pansu that values 1000 quartz. As you can see, we will get the login campaign for 8 days. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18 of April. And on day 4 and day 18, it's a guaranteed 1000 quartz. So pretty much at least 3000 quartz, I would assume. If we get lucky, it can be higher. If you get really unlucky and just get the bare minimum each day, it could be lower. But to be honest, if you really manage to get six out of the uh, six out of six days with 100 quarts, then I really feel bad for you. I think 250 is like the average. So if we take the average for the six days, that's like um, 1.5k. So this should be like 3.5k roughly and with that, you know great quartz income great source and we also be getting a weekly login bonus so each week after the episode airs so each each first day after the episode aired we really are getting a special login campaign it will give us one item here for example we see a five pull ticket not sure how many five pull tickets this will be if it's always with five pull tickets we'll see we'll see how it goes but you know more free stuff that's fine and um maybe it's just each week a free five pull ticket so you know nothing too crazy but hey free is free and again especially really good for people who a need shards or b who you know can still pick up some units from that we are getting a new panel mission that will net us a kazuma's party is back title so you know celebrating for season three we had the same thing for the backwind spin-off and the season announcement so that's cool people can grab those and the other rewards of course that we get through the different panel mission stages and then we finally start with the news and the first news is we are getting a new forbidden event and with that we are also getting a new main event and as you can see the welfare of the first event will be in summer Melia. so Melia will be a freestyle welfare unit for free with the custom so if you still in JP don't have mainly a four star, you can at least get the custom food a three star unit. And well, you can see a beautiful, gorgeous, magnificent character there on the side that actually makes a cat pose while wearing a maid outfit. You know it, guys. My dreams finally came true. And not only my dreams, but everyone's dreams because we are getting made aqua. And with that, let's take a quick look at the video. Yeah, live stream videos suck a little bit. Yep, that's right. We are getting made Aqua. And as you can see here in the text, it doesn't stay limited. So this will be probably our first non-limited aqua since onsen aqua since the release of the game pretty much after four years we are getting a non-limited aqua take that boys take that boys and she's a wind unit and to be honest i just love the fact that her animation is like this this glowing toilet bo uh, bowl we have literally our toilet goddess guys we got a toilet goddess <laughs> I think it's so funny. I'm not sure if I'm kind of sad that we don't get to see where she like spawns a million of fish after the pond there. But, you know, that's still great to have. I'll take that. Now let's take a quick look at the second unit that's coming. That's right, the second unit will be Forbidden Kazuma. And I just want to highlight a few things here. First up, the Forbidden background is gorgeous because you can see the castle from Aqua there. You can see the moon from Forbidden Megumin in there. Like, there are literally references to the other Forbidden Olds in there, or the Forbidden Units in there in the background. So that's really, really cool. Besides that, of course, the pose is just like the sleeping samurai there, but if an enemy comes nearby, he opens his eyes, is instantly ready to fight back, right? Classical thing. And even there, look look at how he places his hand in front of his eye. He literally does the Megumi in the Chinchin Bure pose. 
there's so many cool references there i love that i love that i think it's really really well done right so yeah these are the two upcoming units for the first bundle that we are getting after the anniversary and dude i'm, I'm happy what should i say this this is a dream come true this is my dream come true it's it's really really pock um we are of course getting some campaigns and we talk about the kits in a second i'm not sure if they show it here i think they show it here but we'll see we are getting of course you know login campaign stuff we get a special panel mission where we can get um a skill potion we of course get the infinite summon spec where you get another 10 roll if you share them we are getting a step up banner where we get a 15 percent rate on forbidden units on step three a 30 percent rate on step four and on step five we are getting a ticket that guarantees us a unit i'm not sure still if it's a forbidden unit if it's um it's a just a fast unit I think it's a guaranteed forbidden unit so you know we have i think six forbidden units now let me just double check we have aqua kazuma migumin Wiz, aqua kazuma migumin Wiz, chris and union yeah i think it's six so don't miss anyone so it's a one in six chance to get the right unit i mean it's not best odds but especially for people who miss all the forbidden units that's really really great there's a good chance um then of course let's sneak peek up there yeah we're getting a rerun of another forbidden banner with um the older ones in there so that's pretty cool okay that's that's something i want to tease for now so let's get back to the video because uh, i want to show the kids real quick and <clears throat> also what they do in battle because they are nuts okay they they are really nuts let me just remove myself here real quick and let me just get the music back so for aqua as a permanent unit you probably expect her to not be the greatest right but dude trust me she's she's so good oh my god oh my god i'm so happy passive trade physical attack up nothing too crazy basic is a neutral basic nothing too crazy but the skills the skills are the big thing the, the real big thing first up okay okay prepare prepare yourself for what i'm going to say okay you don't believe me you, you will not believe me it's, it sounds so stupid but it's real okay for aqua we have the first skill cyclone attack plus it deals 147 147 physical wind damage to one enemy or up to 194 percent when the hp is above 70 percent and greatly increase damage caused by weak points for 12 seconds and yes with greatly we mean another tier 3 rash red unit so besides Kazuma, the Ani unit, we are getting a permanent unit that has a tier 3 rash red skill. And it's a mate unit, of course, right? Of course it's a mate unit. But we're not stopping there, right? Tier 3 alone would just make a unit good. Why should we stop there if we can finally have a good Aqua? So the second skill, to no one's belief, is a damaging skill, right? Not just any kind of buffing skill, right? It's a freaking damaging skill. It deals 189 physical wind damage to one enemy, and it slightly increases the physical attack of all allies as an EX buff for 12 seconds. So, you know, she has a small physical EX attack buff on that skill as well, which is already good, don't get me wrong. But the big thing is, have you seen my video of the Chris Arena one where it just said a unit casually doing like 3 million damage? You know, the big thing about her was the fact that she has a 4 times hit with a skill that, you know, does 4 times hits if you have at least 3 buffs on you. Well, that skill is back on this Aqua. So, in theory, in theory if you have three buffs on her which should be pretty doable i mean she literally has one buff herself it's a wind unit so you probably have a buff on like fast chris in there who provides speed boost who provides physical and magical attack buff and just like that you already have your three buffs in there right you already have your three buffs in there so now we just have a skill that deals 189 percent damage four times which is up to 792% damage. The one thing about that is, as far as I remember from the video later, we see it there, is that the cooldowns are 
rather high, but at the same time, we have Fast Chris in there for CDR. We have another unit in there, we will talk about in a second, that has CDR in there, so it's doable. It's doable to just spam both of these skills with the Aqua and then potentially, you know, use your ulti to provide healing, to lower enemy's defense, to just do even more damage. So, like, this Aqua for a physical team can provide all the debuffs on an enemy you ever want while still doing insane damage and heal you. It's, it's really, really nuts. Okay, then let's talk about Kazuma, right? Let's talk about Kazuma. There we go. So, for Kazuma, his passive trait is an increased physical attack and additionally increases it if the enemy has a debuff on them. Like, for example, Rash Red or like... You know, defense done from Aqua's ulti, fitting really well in there. His wind attack deals 100, uh, like his basic, his wind attack, 113 wind attribute physical damage to one enemy. So again, elemental basics, really, really good to have. And yes, it will be a wind Kazuma. The second skill deals randomly 146 physical wind damage to an enemy twice and reduces chill skill charge time of all allies i'll need to check the video later if it's six or eight, uh four seconds we'll see and then his second skill tornado slash plus randomly deals 185 physical wind damage to an enemy twice and slightly increase wind damage for all allies so he will have two double hit skills one with cdr one with providing a wind damage boost for your team and then the special skill is forbidden chinchimaru perfect name perfect name i love it and Boy, is that a good skill. 306 wind attribute, physical critical damage to one enemy, so it's a guaranteed crit, so pretty much like a 612% damaging skill, and medium increase in physical attack of all allies, so he can also buff in theory, but to be honest, I think this buff doesn't matter because you potentially run him with like, you know, Fast Chris, so Fast Chris will already provide buffs, so that doesn't matter. But the second part matters, and that's a small increase in critical hit rate for 14 seconds. If you don't know what that looks like, I also have arena runs up on my channel with Forbidden Chris, who is also the small increase in crit rate, and the amounts of crit you can get there is really, really good. And the more multi-hits you have, right, the more attacks you do where each instance can crit, the better this buff becomes. And just with these two units, we literally have three skills that provide eight hits in three skills we can already provide eight hits so the only unit that doesn't have a multi-hit that would fit well in here is fantasy uh, fast chris and to be honest maybe we get a replacement for fast chris sooner or later who just fits in perfectly with that team and this team will be so unbelievably strong. If you thought the Chris damage from water is already insane, this team can do the same, if not even better, I would assume. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's actually a little bit lower, but that's that's my current prediction, is that this team will just destroy the current highest damage we've done in Arena. Which is so unbelievably. <laughs> okay. With that, uh, let's go back to the video to just check out the units in battle real quick. Here we can see the different units, their artworks, including the Welfare Lia. Here again, you can see the skills of Aqua, Tier 3 Rash Red, and th the small smiley icon with the arrow is the one that like makes it multi-hit. So that's that. Um, then we have the Kazuma, of course, with wind damage and... Uh, CDR, they sadly don't click on it, and there you can also see his passive trait icon with like the debuff bonus arrow. Um, the Maidalia is kinda okay, HP condition hit, earth damage block, and heal per turn, which is, you know, a passive that we don't have on Lia, I think, so that's cool in that regard, but like nothing too crazy. But let's jump right into battle if the stream loads, because... That's like a big premium of live streams that is sometimes not loading properly. <laughs> there we go. Can you stop bugging around, please? But there you can see tier 3, tier 3 rush up there, right? Tier 3 rush red. Double hit. Double hit. 
Yes, sadly, we will only see one hit because we only have two buffs on Aqua. Now we would have the three buffs. But, um, wait, let, let's let's see the CDR sk uh, skills here. Let's double check the CDR skill here. Okay. 22, 20, 19. It went from 19 to 30, so it should be six seconds of CDR. That's good to know. Okay. Second CDR. Let's scroll a little bit ahead. There we can see Kazuma's ulti. That was one too much. Here comes the sad part. He now uses Kazuma's ulti. Which, by the way, looks so cool. It literally does the samurai move with a wind strike. And then the later hit afterwards. Like, look at this animation. It's so classical Japanese anime style. It's it's so good. I love it. And yes, it does some pretty good damage. Let's just take another look at it. Look at him in the bottom right there. Putting a sword and then damage. It just is like 70k damage with like no buffs besides the tier 1 wind damage buff, right? Here, Aqua would have been able to hit the four times hit, but since the mob just died after one hit, you only see one damage number. That's fine, right? So that's 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 pretty cool looking. Okay, okay. But we're, we're not ending here. We're not ending here because we, we said it before. We got some information and we're getting a new, uh, new unit. And let's just take a look at who the unit is, shall we? よう Okay, so based on the trailer here, first few information that we got, we don't know the kit yet, they don't show anything like that, but based on the ulti animation, we can expect her to be a lightning unit and it be a single target ulti lightning because there's only one cabbage. If it's AoE, they normally show multiple cabbage, so single target lightning ulti so finally we have another lightning mage that's pretty cool right a lightning mage then a second of off this is of course probably her welfare artwork the one where she carries the apple because we normally get the unit once for free as a free star um so that's pretty cool and then um where's the other artwork this one this is probably the four star artwork i would at least assume so that's pretty cool with like you know she breaking the ground with her lightning powers and the other characters around her so really really cool um no information again sadly what she does what her kid looks like what her ulti looks like stay tuned for that the moment i have it of course will you know make a new video or share the information some through uh, some way with you guys so you know that's pretty cool and now we have one more thing to talk about right we have one more thing to talk about and that's of course, we are getting two other new units that are coming up, right? And they not only stopped there, not only showed us two upcoming banners, they actually decided to tease something else with us. Let's take a look, guys. あ、待っ that's right we are getting iris in wonderland a reference to the well-known story of alice in wonderland just want to go quickly through here again to you know talk about the different units that got teased here 
Um, let me lower the volume a little bit for that. So first up, we have Bunny Kazuma. He's the clock bunny running around. And of course, Iris as Alice. Probably the artwork of Kazuma, this I would assume. Um, so that's really cool. Then we get Hatmaker Vanir. Kind of fitting, I think. We get the, the cat as Megumin. Which, yes, guys, means we are getting another Megumin because we didn't have enough Megumins recently in GP, right? Right? At least, okay, to, to the defense here, we are also getting a lot of Kazumas recently, right? We have the Ani Kazuma. We have now Forbidden Kazuma into this Kazuma. So that's also three Kazumas pretty much back to back to back. But it's still better than the Megumins, okay? It's still better than the Megumins. Ruffian here, um... Probably as the guards or something like that. Not sure who he's supposed to be. Um, but, you know, he's there. Not as a unit, just as an outfit. Then we, of course, have our new unit, Rain, in a beautiful bunny costume. I think this outfit looks gorgeous. I, I love it. And funny enough, because who is the character who wants to have Iris the most, right? Who is the character who wants to have Iris the most? Of course, it's gotta be Big Mommy, Queen of Hearts, Claire. And yeah, this marks the first reference, kind of, to like real world novels, which I've seen, which is really cool. And that just opens the path to get multiple upcoming events that are based on other fairy tales. Cinderella, Snow White, who knows? There are so many options out there, so that's really, really cool. Um, Sally, again here, we didn't get like any big information about anything, just the full artwork of Alice. As you can see here, no information on Element, what the units do, anything like that. When we are getting, at least currently I predict that we are getting it shortly after, um, after raindrops. But of course we are getting rain before, because it would make sense to get a rain skin where we don't have OG rain. Yeah, Quay makes too much sense as Queen of Hearts. I agree. It's so fitting. Let me skip through it again a little bit just to see if there's like anything else interesting here. I don't really think there's like gameplay wise anything new. They showed one thing, which is like uh, upcoming stuff, like quality of life stuff that we are getting, which is nothing too crazy, but I still try to find it again. Dude, watching YouTube live streams after the live stream is so weird, but there it is. First up, Claire is finally becoming a full unit by actually giving her her long-deserved ulti 2. And her ulti 2 will be, I think I remember correctly, it's neutral damage, 409 neutral damage to an enemy. Um, it's an EX buff to, I think, physical attack. Maybe tier 2, I'm not 100% sure. I would need to watch it in a second when they show it off in-game. And last but not least, she will get... Fixed neutral damage on hit on herself. That's something cool, right? See if we can see it here in a second. There it is. So there's animation first up. Yeah, you can see a tier 2 EX physical attack buff and on herself the tier 2 neutral damage buff on hit. And if you were confused as I am... Is it a guaranteed crit? No, it's not a guaranteed crit. They just got lucky with the first crit, which was <laughs> so funny for me. And I was so happy that I actually showed a second attempt there. So yeah, that's coming. So that's pretty cool, right? Um, finally getting an ulti 2 on Claire, aka one of the other units that didn't have that. And last but not least, they showed us some updates that are coming in May. And first up, we have the option which I'm not 100% sure how will actually work, to display battle customs in the home screen. You can now switch and display battle customs using the button to switch between illustrations and home customs. So we'll see how that looks and how you can interact with them. Like, can you choose different poses or anything like that? Is it like a spine viewer kind of thingy? We'll see, we'll see. Second of all, the number of home characters will be increasing from 5 to 10. And they will also allow you to select the same characters with different outfits for the background. So it's now possible to set members of the same character and customs and backgrounds can be set for each member. So 
at least from what I understand, you can now, for example, have like, oh, I like these three aqua skins, right? And just select them to, to display them properly. So that's really cool. And of course, you know, kind of one them in the main screen, one of them is battle screen, one is live to the avatar or something like that. And with that, you know, that's something nice, right? That's something nice. My game crashed. Whoops. That's why the music is gone. And I think that's pretty much everything that I kind of can or want to show here. Don't think we have like any other big news there. Um, there was the teaser for the next live stream at the end there, which is... Um, First up, there's live campaign going on where if you retreat, you can win 3,000 yen cool coupon code to use. Where is it? Where is it? Was it before that? I'm not sure. I didn't make timestamps for that, so sorry for that. But there is. The next live stream date will be announced on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. So that pretty much just means for me the next collaboration will... Well, the next live stream will probably be for a collaboration that's why they don't teaser the date yet because normally for collabs they will tease the date with the collab teaser so you know that potentially means a collab is also on the horizon we have no clue yet what the collab could be but i'm hyped for that i'm hyped for all the content i think new unit plus forbidden kazuma plus mate aqua plus the whole alice and wonderland theme is really really cool and i'm so curious to see what they will do with that in the future but yeah, um, with that, we are at the end of the live stream and also the live stream summary. So um, not as short as I hope it would be as usual, but I just want to give the full details, my personal opinion on the units and stuff like that. I hope you appreciate that. And don't dislike that. Otherwise, I hope you just skip through the video, worst case, and see what you want to see that way. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream summary. If you did, like, subscribe, follow for more content. And of course, if you want to support what I do, feel free to either subscribe on Twitch, become a member on YouTube to get awesome benefits, or, you know, either use the donation link or a coffee link to support me through different means so I can have more time to work on the encyclopedia, which should hopefully, by the way, soon have the rewards for the second global side quest there as well. But yeah, that's all with this YouTube video. Stream will still be going, of course, where we are going to do the summons on a part two banner of the global honey. So that's really parked later, some Acheron pulls and Akastara as well. So, you know, if you missed the live stream, make sure you check out the other videos as well. And for the future, tune in because the live streams are always really, really fun. I like them a lot and I hope you like them as well. So have a nice day and see you all in the next one. Bye.